Okay, welcome to the CESS meeting. Today is August 3rd of 2022, and we have uh, three topics on the agenda. Carity has proposed uh, a uh, text that illustrates how the module block proposal is affected if it's built on top of a layer zero proposal. Um, so we're going to start with a review of that and then follow up with a conversation, continuing our conversation from last week on the signature of the module constructor. And uh, and then if we get some time, we can uh, remaining after we make some choices about how we want to shape the compartments proposal and whether to break it up into a epic of layers or saga of stanzas. <clears throat> More on that later. Um, Carity. Let's uh, let's let's see your your changes. Okay. Put the tie in. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm sharing my screens. Hopefully you can see it. So Nicola and I we, we were talking about this and as a uh, as a validation of what layer zero is trying to do. Uh, how other proposals like module block will be able to um, build on top of layer zero. So uh, he was supposed to do this, but he's on vacation. So I, I took a stash at it. And um, it, it seems that it's um, coming together very well in a sense that uh, there's only two meaningful changes in the spec that needs to happen to support module blocks. The first one is obviously having a new syntax specified there. The, the second one is to define the runtime semantics, uh, evaluation semantics of module block. Um, and uh, when you start looking at this code here is quite similar to what we do in the module constructor uh, this one, uh, the module constructor uh, percent module percent um, is very similar to that in a sense that what we're doing is let's get some uh, referral, which in this case will be either in a script or a module. It could also be null. Um, uh, there are certain instances in which this might be null, but um, I don't have all the details there. I believe it's the on click and an HTML element that can give you a, a, a null referral, something like that. Uh, but you get the referral, and then with that referral, what you do is basically um, using that referral to resolve the same way that you resolve today, anything that represent an specifier associated to uh, a, a module. Uh, so basically you use a referral as a closure to create an import closure function that allow you to um, delegate the, the resolution of anything that depends on that module block. Uh, sorry, anything that the module block depends on. Um, so this is very similar to what we do. The difference is that in the module constructor, we can look at that. We don't do this one. We do the new mechanism to resolve the uh, module intents because dependencies of module intents must be depend uh, must, must be module intents itself, which is different here. The, here we're resolving to um, a, a module that is not necessarily module intents. It's just uh, the same mechanism that we use for dynamic import, basically. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. As for the source. Very straightforward. Well, we create a source module source intents. We get the body that was provided via the the module body was provided via the 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 syntax, and then we parse that source and we 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 um yeah we we parse that and we att attach to the internal slot of the module source intents. The same we do for the module, so we ended up returning the module intents down. So very straightforward. The only thing that is up for discussion here is this one here, which is a host initialization module block, which basically saying I have a new module record and I have a ref uh, a referral. Do whatever the host needs to do in order to accommodate things that are needed for the module record to work. 
And this specifically, I can think about two things there. First, this mechanism can define um, the host defined field associated to this module record. It can also define the, uh, where is it here? Uh, it can also define the import meta fields that you might be able to inherit from, not inherit, but you will be able to copy them from the, um, from the referral. So basically when you do a module block, the module method you're gonna get is exactly the same as the module method you get outside of the module block. It's the same thing. Um, so this will give sufficient information to the host to do the wiring between the two records to try to associate the two records in a way that when you ask for the meta, you can build that meta object for the for, for the module block uh, intents. Um, and that's it. Um, this other one is just one change of one of the abstract operations from the layer zero. I believe we can get away without this. So I'll, I'll probably make some changes there to accommodate this. This is just uh, unnecessary, I would say. So once I make that change, this will go away and really the new spec will be just simply the definition of the syntax and the runtime semantics of that new syntax and that's it. There will be nothing else and then the host initialization block. So it's very, very simple. The tricks that we came up with, which was the creation of the closure as the input hook. So you think you see here in this line, line 10, step 10, you see we create a function built a built-in function out of this definition of this closure. This is what gave different instances the ability to behave differently to resolve their dependencies. And that's the trick. We have this internal slot that we use for resolving the things that you need. So when you do import on this instance that is returned here, the O, um, it's just going to look at the import hook and try to go with that to resolve the dependencies and then initialize the, 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 the module. Um, so that's pretty much it. There's really not much. Um, Compared to what we have right now there, uh, if you go into, let me see if I can get to that. If you go into the current spec, which might be linked out from here somewhere. Maybe I can just get it from here. If you look at the spec is, Oh no, this is not it. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's you, you, we can we can look at it at the diff. The diff is huge. Like we 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 have. Um, let's see. What can I do? So it's basically removing majority of the spec text that we have in there. But it's a lot of red in here that we don't necessarily need anymore because the layer zero does that for us. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I think it's a good validation. I think uh, it, it gave us more ammunition to continue this path, making small adjustments, and then and then we can go from there. So yeah. let me make sure I get the, the punchline right. The um, uh, the total implied changes to layer zero itself are what? The layer zero itself um, is here, so it's. It has a, a couple of modifications on the current spec, one runtime semantics, one new. No, new. I, I, I meant in order to accommodate, given layer zero, the layer zero that we had before this exercise, in order to accommodate module blocks on top of layer zero, what changes do we need to make to layer zero? No, there's none. Uh, there's all, one that I'm proposing, uh, only one. Let me see if I can find it here, um, which is that the this parse module source, which produce a, a, a record called now a, 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 a module source record, which is a new kind of record, which is just for the, an artifact. So eventually when you ah. need a, a source text module record, you just copy those things into the source text module record. So that thing that does that, is expecting right now is expecting a source text only. Got um, it. 
but the source text is not a thing that it will receive now with this runtime semantics because we already have the parse code. So in that case, we just need to um, modify this method to allow not only receiving the source text, but also parse nodes. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would like to do instead is that this thing only receive parse. So the name will change. It receives the parse nodes. And depending on where you are, you can parse. Uh, in here, you already have the body that is parse. In the layer zero constructor, where is it? Um, it's a layer zero constructor. In the module constructor here, rather than calling the rather than calling the where is it? Um, sorry, it's an here module source. Rather than calling, let me see, parse module source. Or do we call that? Uh, we call it here. So rather than calling this thing here, we parse this first. And then the result of that is what we pass to the abstract operation. So that Go way ahead. we simplify that even more. It seems that you will have different ways to get your hands on a, on a parse node. And then what you need is just extract the metadata out of the parse node and create its record. That's, that's consistent with Modable's needs as well, I think. Um, so yeah, so but I uh, I think the important part is that it's very 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 similar. There are still a couple of things like this one resolved to a module record, um, a source text module record. We don't support that in layer zero, but I think it's we are in debating that part still, uh, Nicola and I. Uh, so whether or not this this, this should be sufficient, uh, but I think we can accommodate this. Yeah, I think that the only thing I have to say about like uh, so for for I mean first foremost this looks fantastic. It's uh, your the punchline is fantastic. <laughs> the, the um the the large point that the that the layering is going to work well for these proposals is is fantastic. I think that on two dot one runtime semantics and evaluation step eleven for performing host initialize module block. Um, that is dubious because that needs to be virtualizable. Um, but this is only for a module block definition. So it doesn't have to be virtualizable. It just needs to have, well, we need to have a, we need to come up to the end of a conversation about what we want to do about threading import meta. Um, so, uh, so on that, on that note, I think I had a note here. I think I had a note at the bottom of it. Let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, so, so who, so what can this be? Uh, the let me see, what this referral can be, and it can be a no, it can be a script. Which mm -hmm. those cases you will not be able to virtualize that thing. Um, if it is a module record that is that does not have an associated module instance. So it's not derivated from a module instance. You will not be able to virtualize that. But if this thing is a is a is a module instance, basically imagine that I have a module block inside a source that I create using new module source. So the instance that is the referral of it will be the intents, uh, a module record that is associated to the intent that you create off of that source. And uh, so in that case, the, the the virtualization will be, as you said, complicated because there's really the, the host doesn't know much about it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I had a, a comment at the end here saying that it could be a module record associated to another module intents, which in, in which case the meta, the input meta field can be copied over or, or know, just passed is another just just shared is another possibility yeah um, yeah I can, I can i can probably one thing that i might be able to do and that now you mentioned i can add a new step before this one which is some just simply saying if the referral is a module record 
copy the value of the import meta into it. Mm -hmm. Because that value can be set or could be uh, undefined. And either way it works. If it is undefined, when someone access it, it will create it by the host. If it is defined, then it will use it. Uh, and therefore you get you get the, 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 the thing that you need. So it might be might be easier to accommodate that in such a way that we, we can still call the host initialized block, but it doesn't do much for things that it doesn't know. Yeah, I think that that would that would produce the behavior that I like. Um, I, I'm I'm not understanding why we need a new host hook at all. Why we can't define what it is, the relation. I mean, the module block is the you know the semantics of it has to do with its relationship to the module that contains it. Yeah, the module we'll... that contains it, if it's created with a module constructor, then the uh, re referral and um, you have me pronouncing it referral now. Uh, referral and import meta is passed into the module constructor parametrically without uh, anything needing to look at it. Um, no. I so so here, here's why, Mark. When you access the import meta, assuming that you have a, a module, assuming that you have a module that, or in a script or a module or a script and you have a module block inside that. Okay. Um, and so at this point, you're not creating any, any intents in user land. They are created by the host, uh, by, okay. not by the host, by language. So the language is creating that intent for you and yada, yada. If you access the implement up from within the module block, okay, you're going to get into this. This is the runtime semantics for input down meta. You're well, gonna get but, 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 but I would say that the place where you got into that semantics is what the binding of import.meta is in the containing module. Uh, and then it's simply the same binding for the module block. Yeah, this, so is, this is just the syntax, runtime semantics of the syntax. So input the meta will be computed during the runtime semantics evaluation of it. And when the code needs to evaluate that syntax, it will get to this abstract, this, this runtime semantic, and it will basically attempt to get the associated module or a script, which in this case, it will be this, the module block. So this is going to be the module block. From that module block, it will try to see if the import metas are defined. Um, and then based on that, it will decide to create it or not. And it, when, when it creates it, it, it asks the host to create it. Because okay. don't know so, so, so I'm, I'm suggesting that the host decision point need, should, should only come much earlier, is when the host contain, creates the containing module the host decides what referrer identifies the containing module and, um, and what import meta is in scope in the containing module. And then when the containing module evaluates a module block expression, then the module block expression just inherit with, does not, you know, there's no more decisions for the host. There's no more invocations of the host. Everything from there on is just defined by the language spec. Well, so, right now it's lazy, so they don't do it if they don't need to. Well, well we so, do so I'm suggesting don't, I mean, is there any observable difference between it being lazy and not lazy? And if it's not lazy, then we force the decision to be made earlier. Um, and that just results in a cleaner spec because now the semantics of the module block is not up to the host. Uh, essentially, we could we could do something similar but, to what we wait, did but the module. I'm still, I'm still confused. I'm, I'm still confused because the module block is subject to the host. Why? It's subject in the sense that um, if the example that I was given, like that, is a module evaluated by the host, your script type module or something like that, and you have a source, and the, there is a module block in that source. The import metas of that don't need, you don't have a way to virtualize that because you're not instantiating that instance. The, That's right. the syntax is doing that. So the import metas associated to that module block are handled by this by the host, not by us. Yes. So I'm saying, so, I'm saying that I'm saying no, so um, I'm saying that the 
the the host should determine what the what the binding of import meta is when it evaluates the containing script. Um, may, maybe I can help with this. Uh, maybe I, I think that what Mark is suggesting is that we accelerate Excellent. the runtime semantics of evaluating import meta to the point at which a module block is evaluated. No, I'm saying that that uh, the oh sorry the the, the the evaluation of imp of the import meta expression, but the binding, the, the value that it evaluates to, should be passed directly to the module block, priming its import meta internal slot, so that we never visit uh, the body of step four. Or and, without, and, and without at that time uh, involving a host hook. Right. Okay. Where it's just it's deterministic by the language that the host hook only intervenes when, it, when first evaluating the outermost source unit, the, the outermost script or the outermost uh, module. Yeah, I, I, I would say that that would be a no go for implementers. I'm not an implementer, I'm just- uh, it's, If it's not observ it's, if it's not an observable change, then um, in terms of what implementations need to do now, then it's not an implementation burden. Uh, I think I know a reason why implementers might balk, and that would be that. Oh no, we could. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you, you have the it's, model it's block doesn't mean that you will import it. That's yeah, it. yeah. So, so let me let me put it this way: is that the the module block is for one, the module block might never be used, um, in which case instantiating import meta is a burden on the runtime, um, and then also the the module block may itself never utter import meta. In which case, there's right. no possibility that it would ever be used at all. Yeah. Um, but th that is which, which they can do all they can do all that by looking at the record. The record says if they haven't implemented or not. I, I mean, uh, this is yeah. Just I, I, yeah I think I, th I think if if we're about to if we're going to make any compromise at all to accommodate the optimization of dealing with code that doesn't say import meta. The place to put that compromise is to uh, is the static API of the source record. Is to just have the static API of the source record say whether the thing mentions import meta. Yes. And if you and if you do it there, then you don't need to do it anywhere else. Yeah. So I, I'm still I'm still fussy about what what would be the motivation of this change in behavior. The, the motivation of this simple. change is that the language is much more deterministic, is giving the host far fewer choices. We do not want to give hosts the latitude to populate the import meta of... Uh, of the contained block to be different than the containing module. I mean, one, one way to do it, one way to do it without pushing, pushing them to do that for all records would be that we could, we could come here, we could make this an abstract operation. Mm -hmm. This one, not, not the, 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 the yes. sub block, this one here. We make this an abstract operation and then we call this operation here uh, and we call the same operation on the module blocks here to compute the, the meta for that uh, referral. And then we copy that into the import meta uh, internal slot. And that means that if you have a module source, the meta will be the meta that was computed for once upfront ahead of time by the by, by the runtime semantics of the uh, in the referral, so that that might be easier to digest for them. Yes. Then they can say, "Oh, yeah, when you have a if you add a, mo a, a, a module source a module block into your code, that immediately triggers the creation of the input meta upfront during parsing and evaluation during evaluation." And that might be okay for that. Well, sorry, if you, if you have a module block expression inside the source, then the text of the module block expression 
is also statically there. And if it doesn't mention import meta, then the module, you know, if nothing in the module, including the nested module blocks, mentions import meta, then the module as a whole has not mentioned import meta and you don't need to compute it, right? Yeah, that's what this is supposed to do. They host initialized module block, by the way. It gets a referral, it gets a record, it decides whether or not it has to do anything up front or um, okay. implement a developability, I... whatever you name it, like it doesn't really matter, but whatever it is. Okay, but that's that's only for the outermost source unit, right? The uh, if if an inner source unit says import meta, then the inner source they know it. They know it. They can know it at this point because it's here. The module what, record has that information. What about eval? Eval doesn't oh. get you access to import meta. No, if you if you eval and there's a module block inside of the source text that you're evaluating. Oh God, direct eval you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but this one can resolve to null, basically. Oh, God. Oh, my God. This one, this one can resolve to null. Let's see. So um, this so this issue okay. must, have, must have already come up for module blocks. Is if you can have a module block expression inside a script, then you can have a module block expression inside a script that's being direct evaled inside something else. Yeah, it's like, like, like uh, it will be null. So I think it will be null um, because, well, there is an execution context at that point. It, is it empty? I don't know. But it certainly can be null. The, res the result of this operation can be null. Meaning you might end up with a referral that is null and then basically trying to kind of a global, but so I think of one the, you know of all the ways to it to explain direct eval, uh, the one that I've had the most most success with, um, as well as you know for under explaining it to myself, uh, is uh, as an unquote operation that whatever the string is that's the argument to the direct eval it's as close as possible to as if that string had appeared lexically in the, in the source instead of the direct eval expression. If you had, you know, it, it, it evaluates almost as if you had just spliced that string into the containing source. Um, uh, uh, and we, we've already made a bunch of exceptions to that, and those exceptions are, are, are there. But in general, we try to, to inherit as much as possible across the direct eval boundary that we would have inherited across a block boundary. That would, pre and, yeah, no, and I believe that this is, you're, you're leading to that the, that the referrer would be inherited by the directly evaluated code. Yeah, and the import meta. Yeah, That's I good. think we're good. We're good. We're good, Mark. I think even if it is inside the eval, uh, direct or indirect eval. No, no, no. Just, just direct. Indirect yeah. eval is a completely different case. So the, the direct eval, I believe, will be fine because you will have an execution context. You will be able to find that execution context. You will be able to find the top mass execution context. And, and you will be able to find that it's inside, this eval is happening inside a module record. Mm -hmm. And you will result to that module record there. So it might be fine at that point. Uh, we have mm -hmm. to update that obviously with the test or something. But well, what mm -hmm. I see here, it will be able to determine that you evolve is happening inside a module, a module uh, source text that has a module, module, um, uh, module record associated to it, and they will be able to resolve that to that module record. Because there is an execution context, it's not empty. Um, there is a, a top mass execution contact as well, which is the outer one. 
of the valve, and they will be able to get that and determine whether that's a strip or a module. And they will determine that it's a module that is doing evolve or a script that is doing evolve, they will be able to link to that. So I think we should be fine. Okay. It's funny how direct eval always takes me by surprise. Whenever there's a new piece of semantics and then the direct eval question comes up, it's always, oh my God, I didn't think of that. Yeah, I was testing that the other day, uh, doing input of meta from, from, from eval and it, it, it throws. Ah. Hmm. Oh, because import.meta in a script throws. So, so the, the, the real question doesn't come up until you have module blocks because module blocks lets you have a module textually within a script and therefore as something that a direct eval can evaluate. Yeah, it's still, it's still we have that issue that I just showed here in the console. Let me show you, let me do it here. Let me make it bigger. So if, if you have a module source right here in a script, and this is doing input meta here somehow, um, this will be problematic because, I'm, I'm not problematic, they need to figure, the host needs to figure what the input meta will do in that case, because if you do input meta in a script, it will fail. So it's saying, oh, it cannot, it can only, it cannot be used outside of the module. Right? So but you will be inside a module because you're doing you're doing this. So <laughs> what is the what is the meta for that? Uh you cannot say the same message because you're inside a module, <laughs> but you don't have a referral. So in that case, I believe it will be the same mechanism that the host use when you do something like an script, a script, source, yada, yada, type, module, where there is no referral at that point, and they still be able to construct the input meta. So that's why it is important to still have this thing here, in my opinion, because they give the host the ability to decide what the implementer will look like. But the, the refactor I mentioned um, might be problematic because by the time you try to do this operation, uh, there will be no uh, referral. So actually this, this comes up already in the current spec and the current, current implementations must do something. I just noticed this. Uh, which is if you're in a module and you do, if, you, if you're in a module A, then if you did a, um, a dynamic import expression within the module A, that dynamic import expression would be conditioned with A as the refer. Right. So if you're in module A, and you do a direct eval of a script containing a dynamic import expression. Normally, if you have a dynamic import expression inside a script, it has no refer. But if you have a direct eval inside a module where the yeah. direct eval is evaluating the script that has a dynamic import expression, what's the refer? Yeah, it's this one here. It's, just, it's the same mechanism. Uh, so that part, I think that part, I'm convinced that this is not a problem because you're gonna hit this. And we can we can look at the import semantics. I think it's somewhere here, close here. You will see that we use the same mechanism. So it's here. So you're getting, when you do dynamic input, you're getting the active module and that okay. works fine. So that, mm -hmm. that part is not the problem. What I'm saying mm -hmm. is that the problem might be that if we don't have, I, I, the problem could be that if you want to compute the import meta here for the referral, the, 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 the browser in this case has to intervene and create that for you. 
because I'm sorry, I'm sorry you said the import meta of the referral of the referral uh, you, you, so, you, so we were saying uh, actually i should type it i mean so, there's an import meta and there's a referral both of which so I, i'm talking about this one here so i might be able to do something like set oh uh, no sorry uh, set um uh this is a module record dot import meta b some abstract operation let me call it create create meta for you put it here the referral which is this one here okay so you do this all good and dandy because you have uh, when when this is a module record, but if this is in a script, it might be problematic. Uh, again, uh, someone has to call the host at some point. You're not going to escape that. So 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 when you say script, I, mean, I think we've just convinced ourselves that there's two script cases that need to be distinguished. There's a direct there's a direct eval that is in a module where the, what the direct eval evaluates is always defined as a script, but that's still happening as a direct eval inside a module. And no. then there's- No, 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 no. So, so, so again, that, that part is fine because this one- Okay. The, so this you're one only has talking about- wording. This one has wording for that. The wording is here. It's saying okay. the execution uh, context stack is empty. No, it's not empty. Okay. The execution okay. context. Good. Top most execution context on the execution context stack, whose script module component is new is not new. So basically, gotcha. you go up until you find something that is a module or a script, and you get it. Good. Good. So uh, this so this goes with the, fine. Okay, it goes along with the principle that all of that the host decisions happen for the outermost source unit only. Right. The problem, uh, is the, the, the solution that I was proposing, which was, let me go back to the solution I was proposing. The solution was that we can make this an abstract operation. So as long as you have a, a module record, you can call this abstract operation that produces the module meta. And it does host operation, yada, yada, fine. But you always get this module meta that you can cache at the module record level. That was a proposed solution. That proposed solution fa uh, fails because the referral that I have is not always a module record. And because it's not always a module record, I have no ways to um, create what I need without talking to the host. Okay. Yeah. And, and as a result of that, um, I, I feel that they have when they because they 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 say okay implementer is happening always inside a source look at it step two they say it has to be a source text module record uh, fine uh, that is fine otherwise it throws um, but the they have internal information associated to that record that allows the host to make determinations what the import meta should look like. Okay. Uh, so I just realized that um, this st the static uh, part of the, the source this the source text module record API that says, does it contain an import meta? Uh, that should be something like, might it contain an import meta? Uh, where it's true either if there's textually an import meta or there's textually a direct eval. If there's textually a direct eval, then it, you can't tell statically if it does contain an import meta, but, but by virtue of the fact that you can, you can statically tell that there's a direct eval, you can statically tell that there might be an import meta. Oh, wow. I didn't quite get that. Uh, so currently we have, uh... In in the compartments proposal, there are property. There's a property needs import meta. Um, 
And the premise has been so far that you can just syntactically analyze, you can statically analyze the content of the um, of the module to see whether it uses import meta syntax anywhere. Mark is, Mark's point is that that is not sufficient, or rather that needs meta must be true either if there's an import meta syntax used in the module or if there is a direct eval that might use import meta. Um, and I think that syntactically, yeah, if there's a if there's a direct eval node in the syntax tree, then needs import needs to be true, basically. No, because it, so direct eval does not allow you to have import meta there. It fails. Uh, if there's a what I'm what I'm suggesting is if you're doing a direct eval inside a module, and the and the the, the direct eval, the you know the syntactic unit the direct eval evaluates is a script. But now with module blocks proposal, the script contextually contain a module block. The, mo the, the module block can have an import meta. So now it's possible for a direct eval to evaluate a string that, that contains an import meta. Therefore, in the containing module, if there is a syntactic direct eval, you have to say that the containing module might contain an import meta. Right. Um, um, but that's only that's only yo. Know, I'll need some. I, I need some help from implementers here about what what to do because it it feels to me that. Eagerly creation of implementa might be problematic. Uh, it's uh, your only uh, wait, so eager creation, even if it's only for modules or you know top level source units that contain either an import meta expression or a direct eval expression. In no other case do you need to create it at all. Right, so I get, I get the, the, I get why the direct eval might be problematic, because inside the direct eval you might have a module source, and that module source might need to get access to the input meta of the outer one. Yeah, um, and and all the implementations already buy into the idea that direct eval puts things, on, you know, direct eval puts things on a slow path. Nobody tries to keep direct eval on the on the fast path. Right, but remember that the, remember, and this might be problematic in a sense that it's very difficult. I, I don't know any artifact of the spec that today allow you to um, accurately predict the presence of a direct eval. No, 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 there, the, 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 there's a direct eval syntax Right. That's that's all that I'm talking about. Is whether it's actually a direct eval or not depends on the runtime binding of the uh, the lookup of the eval identifier. Right. 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 And so so ignore that. Uh, only if it textually contains the direct eval syntax, or it textually contains the import meta syntax. Okay. That that's the switch. And to, to eagerly compute the import meta for those cases and no other cases, I think is all the optimization you need. You don't need to be lazy if you do that, if you have that conditional. Let me see, where is that thing? Um, where is that uh, record? I don't think we have it right now. I don't wait, think we have it yet either. Um, yeah, I don't think we have that detail, but we have talked about having that detail yeah. specified somewhere. Okay, similar to these other things that we have in here, uh, like this one, whether mm -hmm. or not it has a TLA. Um, yes. Uh, and yada, yada. Um, so we're talking about adding a new uh, internal slot a new field to this record, source text module record that says whether or not you have that 
uh, implementer. And okay, yeah, and that so value we, will be will be basically whether or not you have eva direct eval or you have implementa in the source. Correct. And um, and with that information, you will be able to. I'm trying to um, build momentum model here. Sorry, give me a second. So with that information, you will be able to make determinations. Um, um, uh, you'll be able to guarantee that you can build the import meta associated to a module record. Uh, mm -hmm. up front. If, if that value is true, you might be able to do it up front or you might be able to do it lazily. So you can, we can decide in the spec when to do it lazily, when to do it uh, on uh, eagerly, eagerly before, yeah. before creating the module source. I'm still fussy about why is that a why the, is the, that important? The reason it's important is that if you're doing it lazily and you're calling out to the host to do it, then the host becomes active and can make decisions at the time that import meta is evaluated. Whereas if you're doing it eagerly, then all of the host decisions are upfront when it evaluates the outermost source unit. Right, but that's the case today. They are they're doing it lately when you evaluate the import meta. To right, but they don't source. It. But today it's there hard. aren't any virtual modules. Yeah, but virtual, today, virtual, virtual it, modules are different. Virtual modules are different because virtual modules you have to create an implementer up front. You already have. It. If there's no observable difference with regard to the current language, then the change in the way the language states the semantics does not require any of the implementations to change. It just lays different groundwork for how we change the language. Right, you can always, languages do lazy optimizations of eager semantics all the time. But when they do that, it's not the host that's being called, it's the implementation that's being called. So a way to describe what the implementations are currently doing is it's as if the host had made all of the host discretionary decisions up front, had told the implementation what to lazily compute, but it hadn't actually computed it yet. And then later the, la the implementation lazily computes something, but it does it in a way that's transparently lazy. But there's no observable difference between doing it lazy and eager. Okay, so let me step back a, a little bit because sure, we will do that. You still have to call the host. Right, um, but only, only when you're evaluating the outermost source unit. And at that point, the host, after that point, the host is out of the picture, and it's only the interaction. No, you have, you, you have to do it for the, for the module block as well, because the module block uh, retains certain uh, host-defined behavior associated to where that module block was declared. No, what I'm saying is it's, you don't involve the host when you evaluate the module block. You, when you evaluate the module block, the module block deterministically without any host discretion gets from its containing lexical environment, the bindings of those things. Yeah, I, I have to think about this and, and talk to some people because the way I was thinking about this is that the, the host still wants to retain certain capabilities on that module sort the module block because first we don't know how that's going to be played out in the debugger and so on the csp associated to it i think that one's not a problem because it's already parsed um so there are certain things that might be needed anything that that's only observable by the debugger Hosts can do whatever they want without any problem of conforming to the language spec. The issue right, is you have, only you have to give them the you have to give them the, the hooks for that. 
Yeah. Well, but, but those are but those, those are not host hooks in the specification sense because there's no observable consequence to programs running in the language of what the implementation does to communicate with the debugger. So it's not the host in this in the two six two sense of what a host is. So it's the, here's the problem. Uh, define. Uh, sorry, hold define. So for a, oh, sorry, I have typo here. So when does the, so first of all, the first question about this is, does the module block requires to have a host defined internal slot being set? That's number one. And number two is, when is that value going to be set? The way I specify this here is that I'm doing it here. I'm giving the host the ability to not only act on the input meta, but also act on the module defined. Okay. If the only thing the host can do is set the host defined field, where the host defined field is never used by the specification for anything. And obviously it wouldn't be, that's the, that we do that consistently with the host defined field. If the only thing the host can do is to set the host defined field and everything else is determined by the spec, then that's fine. I think that, that in fact, we could erase all of the host defined fields from the language and the implementation would still feel free to add host-defined data to all the records it wanted to, because uh, if it's only using it for semantics that's outside of what's observable in the language, the language itself didn't ever even need to mention the, the existence of a host-defined field. Okay, I, I like that. Uh, you still have to provide the two things though, to that host uh, abstract operation. You need to give the current module record and the uh, referral. Okay. As long as the only we thing the that, host I, we can, I, this will as long, as long as the only thing the host gets to do is set the host defined field. As long as the host doesn't get to do anything that's observable by programs running in the language, I'm okay with that. Okay. So that helps because uh, here we have a question. Uh, Nicole and I were going back and forth on these, like what to do with the host defined when you're creating an instance. Uh, from a uh, new source module, module source. And, and we can we can defer this, set it to undefine, and then when we create the intents, we can get the referral uh, and then give it to the host so the host can define whatever they need to define in that case. But okay, okay, I think I, I have uh, sufficient information now. Uh, let, me, let me work on that. Yeah, as, as just a Gedanken experiment, uh, if somebody proposed a, um, a, uh, a change to the spec where every time the language created a function, it called out to the host to add a host defined, the value of a host defined field to each function. So each function had a host defined field and there was a call out to the host for the value of the field on each function creation. That would not be an observable change to the language. So if you can add host defined fields everywhere and add host hooks whose purpose is only to populate them everywhere without making an observable change, then you can also erase all of them without making an observable change. Okay. All right, we're at time. Um, uh, I'm going Chris, to- can, can, but Sorry, can you open an issue somewhere so we can track the, we don't forget and we can track the, um, the new field on the module record for whether or not it has, it needs a meta? Because we don't have it yet anywhere, not, not layer zero, not, not, not nowhere else. So we need to keep that somewhere so we can go back and do that. Let's uh, let's chat out of band and figure out where to put that. Okay. All right. Um, so next week we'll continue with um, the signature of the module constructor and whether to break the proposal up into um, separate proposals in an epic. All right. Thank you, everyone.